What's up, y'all? Sorry about the delay. I don't know if it picked up where it left off or not, but um, I hope so. Hopes, hopes, hopes. Um, I am trying to get all set up to go back out and record, um, but it is a little bit of a process here. So as everyone slowly comes back in, um, I might even bring someone on the show or on the feed here and have a quick conversation with anybody. I wanted to go back and get some barbecue, honestly, and um, also uh, just take some pictures. And, um, you know, it's getting pretty dark out. And I'm at I'm in Minneapolis right now, um, right around the corner from George Floyd Square. Um, 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 right around the corner from George Floyd Square. So what's up, y'all? Uh, anybody has any questions and they want to pop in here with me, I think you can do that. Um, feel free to try. I'll try to bring you on. It might be kind of weird because usually you do that vertically, but whatever. We'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, I know there's been... Okay, I really just want to touch base real quick on... Um, uh, on kind of like the way the chatter's been going. And, and it, it really... It surprises me, guys. It really surprises me. Because uh, we've had a lot of really, uh, what's up, Bill? A lot of really um, antagonized, uh, or not antagonistic, I'll say, uh, views that are really just firing a lot of venom at you know, George Floyd and the fact that people are celebrating his birthday. And it, it's, it, it blows my mind that like there's so much anger towards this person. And, and I think what I've seen in a few of the comments that I've seen um is that it's um i think i need to push this sorry uh i think if anyone anyone wants to come on you gotta let me know then i can try to add you oh here we go Boop. here we go wow and um was that they were mad no i'm not gonna jump into politics that's not my jam like i'm not here to be a a pundit for any you know any party but what I am is, uh, I'm on, I'm a human, you know, we all are, you know, we are all, we're all out here and there's a lot of family here for George Floyd that is grieving and, uh, they're trying to celebrate the life of their loved one. And I think that's pretty powerful. I would hope that my past, uh, won't follow me to the grave in a way where I'll be remembered for the things I've done wrong. Um, and I get it, guys. There's a lot of things happening in the world right now. And um, it, it, it's a lot of radical things have happened since George Floyd passed. And that being said, um, like in the interview that I, that I had earlier, and I hope you guys were able to hear that because I know I was having some sound issues. It doesn't matter what your views are, but it, George Floyd died. And he died at the hands of a police officer. Now, we're talking about a lot of different issues here. Um, about police brutality, about excessive force, about things that can be changed, about staying silent and maintaining, um, you know, being culpable to issues and crimes that are happening. Um, and I've become um, more aware of the fact that you see signs in these in these uh, marches and these protests uh, that say silence is violence. And I get it. You know, I get it. Um, if you see something, say something, you know, speak up. And I think that's a beautiful thing with the stream here is that um, we're able to speak up. We're able to tell the world. We're able to reach out to people and talk about what affects us. Now, George Floyd passed and that woke up a lot of people and kind of like, well, obviously it brought out a lot of anger, it brought out a lot of hurt, brought out a lot of, um, a lot of emotion that I don't think a lot of people were expecting to feel. And so for me personally, guys, again, this is my personal journey of education. And I'm just happy to have you with me while I'm going through this. Um, and I think like what Eric just said, I think it's more about the world after his death. And that's a big deal. People are looking too much at the person prior to. And now, and I'm very much about moments. Okay, and you guys know this about me that's been with me for a while. Everything about the life leading up to his life, I'm talking about the, his life, 
leading up to the moment where he was on the ground and he had Derek Chauvin on his back and other officers there. That moment is what's in question, right? That moment is what's going to be brought up in court. It's not going to be about, you know, they're tra- they're, they might go for death. They might go for character, you know, evaluations. And, uh, but when it comes down to, and I'm not, a, again, I'm not a judge. I'm not a juror. Um, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'm just some dude with a camera, but I've got a lot of questions. And I hope that we can appreciate that the things that happen in our lives, the things that are going on in anyone's life, um, hopefully we can judge them according to, judge the situation according to what happens not about what was happening like we saw that what happened in portland where the uh the guy that was driving that truck got uh got kicked in the face and you know bashed up really bad and one of the things that people kept saying was he had a beer in his hand he had a beer in his hand and it blows my mind that that was the focus of that situation was that he had a beer in his hand why would that matter when he got kicked in the face like it's trying to victim blame and i think that that's atrocious that people want the people anybody would want to point a finger at a victim and find a way and granted i get it there's a lot of people that are raising false alarms but when you watch that happen like i watch you watch the video guys like in portland i'm talking about in portland when that happened it doesn't matter if the guy was holding a you know an endangered owl not that that would matter but i'm saying the fact that he had a beer in his hand while he was trying to stop a fight how does that rationalize getting booted in the chin, you know? And so moving into what I'm talking about here at George Floyd right here, you know, the world changed. Literally, the world woke up in a big way. I'm talking like three blocks, not even three blocks from where I'm sitting right now. And in that in that street, it woke up a lot of people to what was happening. It woke up a lot of people to the fact that whether we agree with it or not, and, and I'm talking to everybody, and I know I have a lot of people on both sides of the coin that watch this. And by that, I mean people that are on the conservative side, people that are on the liberal side, people that are running the thing. There is racial injustice, racial inequality in our country. In fact, it's just there, guys. We need to address it. There is social inequality in our country. We need to address it. In fact, there is class inequality in our country. We need to address it. In fact, it's, these are just, and it's a human thing, guys. It doesn't have to be political, and I'm so tired so tired of this whole campaign and everything happening right now with the Republicans versus people of color. Like it's turning into these polarized opposites and it's dry. It's, it's, it blows my mind. If you're a Republican, you're a white supremacist, you're a racist. And if you're not for, you know, the democratic party, you know, like, or if you're with the democratic party, you must be some super left, like terrorist that, that hates the world, you know? And, or hates the country, whatever. And, and it's just, there are all these crazy viewpoints that are taking people away from what used to be an opportunity for people to just feel differently, you know? And that's okay for you to not agree with each other. A lot of people don't agree with me, and that's okay. This is just me talking. This isn't each of my views, but it's just wild to see that there's so much anger and animosity towards people right now for not, for, for no reason. Like, we're just choosing to be mad. We're choosing to be upset at somebody over who they vote for. Like, it's crazy to me right now when you ask people who they're going to vote for and there's people are hesitant to answer. Like, well, I don't, I don't really want to tell you that. I don't don't feel comfortable telling you that. Why would you not feel comfortable stating who you vote for? You know, like there used to be, I mean, in my infinite 73 years of experience in the world, there used to be plenty of opportunity for people to have conversations, right? There used to be plenty of opportunity for people to just talk to each other and and get to know each other's viewpoints and and i don't know how we got so far away from that i don't know how we've gotten so far away from the ability to just conversate you know ask questions sit down it used to be like don't bring up politics or religion why why is that so off limits why is it so taboo for us to have issues with talking about politics and religion you know and i I think everyone is it it, it that just blows my mind Like, we should be able to converse about anything, you know, and appreciate, hey, you feel the way you feel. I feel the way I feel. High five. I'm going to go ahead and get a get some barbecue up here with the family of George Floyd. And that shouldn't make you upset. Like, because you hear people say, "How, how could you ever how could you ever like sit down with these people? How could you ever, you know, like and I'm just I'm just like, how could you not? How could you not want to sit down and 
find out what someone's life's all about, good or bad, better or worse, you know, your side, my side, left or right. I mean, come on, man. Get, <laughs> we need to get over ourselves, guys. And, um, but people are so stuck in these, like, they want to preach about their politics and about their, their stance and how right they are, you know? And that's cool. That's right for you. Great. That's what's 100% ring solid and true for you. Great. That's okay. You can feel that way. You can believe that way. You can feel all day exactly how you feel for you. That's okay. But don't tell the guy beside you that he's wrong for feeling the way he feels. And don't sit there and try to spit a bunch of venom at somebody because they don't agree with you. Like, let go for a second, would you please? And just appreciate that both sides of the line have valid points or they wouldn't be there, right? Like, is that, can we agree on that going forward? If you're in a protest, guys, I don't care how far right you are. Those people are out there because they believe, I hope, in, 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 in the totalitarianism of it all, in, in all their groupings, there's enough people there to congregate in a nucleus that brings people around them that they believe what they're, what they're out there for. And you may not agree with it. You may not even like it. You may hate it. You may feel disgusted by everything that's happening, but it doesn't change the fact that they believe what they believe. All right. Now you could be sitting at home watching Fox news and be a hundred percent behind everything you're hearing. And that's okay. You're allowed to feel that way. You shouldn't be threatened in your home or, or, you know, pestered for feeling the way you feel. That's okay. You know, but hey, George, right there. Right is right, wrong is wrong, okay? When it comes down to actions of crime, yeah, right is right, wrong is wrong. We can agree on that. But views are views. Opinions are opinions. That's not right or wrong, okay? So you guys, I would hope we could stop being so cut and dry on our, on, our, on our views and our beliefs on things and appreciate that we spend a lot of time trying to build, and especially this day and age, we got COVID cracking off right now. So everyone's being shut down. Communication's being kind of sequestered to online communication where we read things we're going to school online right there's not a lot of human interaction but we spend a lot of time building these high walled barricades around us insulating us from anyone around us telling us that we're wrong or showing us anything different and that scares the shit out of me i'm going to tell you right now it really genuinely makes me nervous it makes me nervous to think that right now people so many people are afraid of hearing another opinion for fear that it might upset how they feel or what they think or what they believe because they feel so 100 percent solid about the fact that they are right right why? 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 How did how did we get so certain? When did everything become so absolute? When did we become so incredibly entrenched in our beliefs that we're not able to let go for two seconds and think that somebody else might say something that might change the way we see things? You know, you don't have to agree with George Floyd's life, but maybe something that happened here, maybe something about this, this entire group, this massive people that are up here might actually open us up to thinking that there's something in this world that might be different if we try to do things different, right? Like, it, just, it's, it scares me that we're not willing to have conversations. It, it, it makes me nervous that our world is coming to a point that we can't, as people, conversate amicably about things of the world, about people, about humanitarian issues. And I'm not saying that that's what George Floyd's birthday up here is all about. I'm talking right here. That this is what I want to create in this community. I want this more than anything for people to be able to come in here and, co and talk, have a conversation, ask questions. You know, if you have someone in here that pops up, you see their name, they have a strong view about something that you may not agree with, DM them, ask them some questions. Don't attack them. You know what I mean? You don't have to agree on everything, guys. We don't. Matter of fact, I hope people don't agree with everything I say because I hope that they, I might be wrong. I might be very wrong. I might hear something tomorrow that'll upset everything about what I believe. It'll change everything in my world. I would hope that that might happen. You know, I would hope I look for those things in the conversations I have. I, I'm not going to lie, guys. When I step out into the field and I'm starting to interview people, it's nerve wracking. Anybody would agree. Like, it's hard to walk up to a perfect stranger with a camera and a microphone and be like, hey, man, I need to talk to you. How you feel about that? You OK with that? I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to ask some personal questions. You OK with me digging into your life? What do you think? What do you think? And it makes me nervous, too. But I'm excited for the questions or the answers that I get to the questions I ask. So, man, there's a lot more I could say. There's a lot more that I feel right now. Um, I just know that right now, guys, the world needs more communication, less chaos. We need to open up fists and start shaking hands because everybody, not everybody, but so many people right now. There's a lot of fear out there, guys. I mean, people are nervous to even leave their houses in a lot of places. We got COVID. We've got protests. We've got politics. 
we got killer wasps or whatever the hell they are. You know, like let's let's move in the direction of kindness. Can we please? And I don't care if you guys get on me for saying that's oh, such a hody toady thing to say. I don't give a shit if you guys have issues with me saying move in the direction of kindness. Yes, let's do that. Let's move in the direction of conversations. Let's move in the direction of finding some kind of peace and harmony between whatever you feel, and whatever they feel and start finding a, finding a common ground, which is the fact that we're human and our humble falterings, guys, the fact that we're all a little bit fucked up. And I don't mind saying that is what really binds us together. You're right. Cause I'm not perfect by any stretch. I've lived a choppy life at best for the things that have got me to where I'm at right now. And I can appreciate that if anyone else has gone through it, man, we could talk now, but if you've lived a perfect, you know, like high palace wall life, like we can't, what do we have in common? We're all a little broken, guys. Like, we're all a little bit messed up, and we're all trying to figure it out. So hopefully we can try to figure it out together, right, in a community of people that are willing to have a conversation, that are willing to listen to people for a change. Man, I'm telling you right now that, like, if I had it figured out at the ripe young age of 73, end it. Be done. If you've acquired all the knowledge, if you've experienced all the, the information processing that you could possibly get in life at this point, call it, man call it you're good i guarantee i have it here's a small thing i if someone i had a little kid actually i was talking to about cake we were talking about cake and i asked him what his favorite cake was and he told me that it was chocolate cake and i was like oh okay and there was um it's a whole thing anyway there was three different cakes on this table there was a chocolate cake and he was excited to get his piece of chocolate cake there was one that was like you know, like a, it was a white rainbowy type cake. And then there was like this jello cake, which was kind of weird. And he was kind of eyeballing it. And he was like, I don't know what that thing's all about. And he was like eight years old, nine years old right in there. And he was like, oh man. And I was like, what kind of, what, what cake do you like? What's your favorite cake? It's a chocolate cake. And I was like, all right, well, what do you think of this rainbow cake right here? And he was like, eh, it's okay. You know, he had had it. And I think he probably had some that day. And, um, and I was like, what do you think of this jello cake? And he was like, I've never had that. I was like, oh, you should try it. It's really good. And he was like, no, nah, I'm good. I love chocolate. And I was like, okay, well, you've never tried it. You might love it. And he was like, ah, I'm good. I like chocolate. I was like, okay, I get it. And legit, like that came home with me. I was like, man, that's sad. That kid didn't want to try a new cake. I think in life, honestly, guys, and follow my parallel on this, so often we just figured that we have our favorite or we have our answers and we're super afraid to just try something that we may have never tried or listen to something that we may not have heard because we feel we've already got it figured out right? That kid was eight. He already knew he loved chocolate. He didn't want to try that jello cake. And I was like, man, jello cake kicks ass, bro. You might love it. You know, try something new, experience something different. You know, you might find that it agitates or operates your soul, your heart, your thoughts in a different way. You might open up to something new. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know, guys. I'm just hoping that we, we can figure out a way to better operate under the guise that we don't have it all figured out. You know, we're learning as we go and hopefully we can keep learning as we go. Uh, but ask questions, you know, try to operate under the assumption that we don't understand what's going on in other people's lives, too. You know, and that I think is a big deal. You know, something that I've learned in a big way that I don't understand what your pain is. You know, I don't understand your truths entirely. I don't understand entirely what you've gone through. You know, we say a lot and I've said this before, you know, like, you know, we can, that, I, that you, you sympathize with somebody, you know, but like for me and what we're talking about with black lives and with this push and need for racial and social equality, um, I can never be empathetic to that life because I've never lived it. You know, I could be next door and sitting next to the same, you know, in, in the same classrooms to a person of color, but I, I've never lived that life. And that's just the facts of life, you know, like I haven't. So how can I fully be empathetic to that cause? So I don't know. I just, I, I know that there's been plenty of things that have happened where I've had to re rethink me, you know, and understanding that I, I don't understand everything about what you've gone through and what you're experiencing, which is why I don't get too harsh on people when they have comments that come across a little bit cutting. Cause I don't know, maybe I've said something that opened up a wound for you, you know? Maybe I, maybe I even represent, by the way I look, I personify for you something that just triggers something. And, and I can't control my face. It's just how I look. I apologize for that. But um, I know that moving into encounters with human beings, there's going to be so many things that, that happen that we don't understand. So instead of reacting out of anger, I hope that we can all work on responding out of curiosity. So... Um, Anyway, 
those are my thoughts. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get on my little, I get on a little soapbox rant there from time to time, guys, and uh, I'm just saying that uh, I feel strongly about how I feel. You know, that's all there is to it. So, um, and I was trying to let my phone charge a little bit, so you guys had to hear a little bit of the uh, you know, <laughs> the rantings of CJ. But I believe what I'm saying, guys. I'm not just saying it to say it. I legitimately believe what I'm saying. So. Um. Yeah. So I'm going to go back up to this barbecue here and I'm going to have some barbecue and I'm going to sit by a fire and I'm going to talk to some folks. I'm going to ask some questions. Um, I'm going to bring my. Yeah. I'm going to bring my 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 voice recorder because um, I know that there's a lot of uh, people that may or may not want uh their face on camera but i got this guy right here it's pretty cool so i can just record folks and talk to them and let them know that they're being recorded so that i can have that conversation with them and uh and uh yeah anyway uh, i appreciate you guys listening to me and, and, and putting up with uh <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to spend more time doing this kind of stuff, guys, because I really feel like I spend so much time being quiet on camera, just asking questions. I know people talk. I don't get a chance to really tell you how I feel. And, um, and you know, I, I got to tell you, honestly, it's frustrating because I get these moments where I'm, I'm, I feel nervous to say how I feel because it might affect viewers and it might affect, you know, who's going to watch and who's not. And maybe this is what they learn in journalism school. Mad shout out to people that are going to journalism school journalism majors like Michael who I talked to yesterday um maybe that's some of the things you learn is how to maintain your stance while it's being unbiased but also you know not getting lost in the world of uh of reporting I don't know you know <laughs> I'm, I'm slowly figuring it out I think uh and I'm just I'm stoked that we got you guys out here with me you know figuring it out together um uh, but I hope you vote, you know. No, uh, we lost light. Oh, maybe this will work. Boom, boom. Let me do this door thing. There we go. I don't know how long that's going to last, but I got to get out of this truck. Because uh, Andrew's still chilling out of there. And I'm trying to get in on some of that barbecue. <laughs> uh, this phone's about as charged as it's going to get. Uh grab my bag again hey shout out to the squad for getting this bag for my birthday i appreciate you guys it's super dope um and it does everything i needed to do so much appreciated so i hope that you guys are having some conversation even right now in the chat um because it's needed you know we need conversation we need people to feel safe to, to converse legit guys like man it's i've <laughs> this blows my mind how, how dangerous it feels for people to not be able to talk to each other or just even just express your opinions to me not even say like hey i don't agree with you and not have someone be like well what's your problem be like there's no problem my only problem is that you have a problem with me not agreeing with you that's the problem i also have a problem generally with people that come up to me and say hey you know what your problem is because i'm pretty sure they don't actually know what my problem is because i got a lot of problems technology is being one of them you guys know that so <laughs> but i'm working on that I'm, I'm slowly working on that um you know we're getting there you know we're moving through that um so i'm going to uh plug this guy in you know i might even just plug it do the whole bag plug thing it's pretty dope again this bag <laughs> this bag's super cool guys so the bag actually has chargers and stuff built into it so um but as for right now, I'm just gonna leave that plugged in. Yada yada yada. Um, is there any anybody got any questions? I know I kind of went on a ran a, a bender there for for a second, uh, but I'm sure there's got to be some a question or two uh, in in the 
So I got a gift of Reese's. Somebody stopped out. One of one of the uh, one of the viewers stopped in there and dropped off some Reese's with their kiddos. So, but they're like they're super dope. They're uh, I think they're glow in the dark Reese's. Oh, they're glow in the dark snack size wrappers. Pretty legit. Thank you for dropping those off. Very cool of you. Um, yeah, I just showed you, Dara. Yeah, it's scary too when we talk about the lesser of two evils. You know what I mean? Like, who to vote for, and it's just sad that it got to a place where we have to think about it like that. You know, it shouldn't be. You know, we should be excited for voting for who's going to lead our country. You know, like and, and be, you know, in the vanguard of like the the next, you know, phase of of development in our in our in the world, really. You know, so. Uh, sorry, I didn't see that one comment. The question there I said, "Why are you not allowed to live stream right now?" Oh, I am, Lisa. I'm good with live streaming up there right now. I just my battery died on the stupid phone, so I had to come down here and get. Uh, everyone's been incredibly cool about me live streaming. There has been absolutely zero issues with it. Um, I'm just legit trying to get uh, t uh, technologies <laughs> figure figure it out here. So um, that's my only problem, and. Uh, and then I'll be back up at it, walking around, saying hi to people. So, what's going on with the streamers in Portland? Pff, I don't even know, guys. They're in this cancel culture nowadays, where it's like, if you don't completely get behind what they're doing, you're cut off. Like, you're out, you know? Your boys get, that was you, Rebecca? Oh, yeah, it was Rebecca that gave them to me. So, um, which is ridiculous to me, guys, that it's gotten to a place where, uh, you know, and I, oh, man, I can't even get in on that. That's just... Yeah, <laughs> the whole uh, cancel culture in the Northwest right now is crazy. Yeah, I mean, I got threatened, you know what I mean? You know, so it's, it's just whatever. And you guys all that would have been watching me, you know that obviously I'm not a police officer. I don't work for the cops. I don't give them access to my footage because it's all live. They could watch what they want. There's a nervous factor is that people are like, oh, I know who you are and you stream. And so I can single you out where there's like 10 people out there. Um, there's 10 people out there that are like on in any street corner that are streaming as well. But because they know your name, it's like, now we want you to stop streaming because we know your name where there could be someone standing right next to them. They're like, Oh, we don't know you yet. So you're good. But uh, sorry, I just like jam my finger, <laughs> crack my finger now. Um, so, I mean, uh, please read this comment aloud. Is that the comment? Um, okay, thank you, CJ. Looking out for you after seeing one video. Oh, yeah, no, you guys saw it. Yeah, no, I don't mind talking about that. That's fine, you know. Um, yeah, it was <laughs> it was ridiculous. You know, I got... I got <laughs> and the thing is, like, okay, guys, real fast. I'm going to address that real fast. So the other day when I got um, a couple things, really, really straight up. So... Uh, when I got to the, that, that direct action march, a couple things, uh, it was advertised on Facebook. So anybody could come out to it, you know, but again, it wasn't my, well, I didn't organize it. So whatever, maybe there was just certain people they didn't want there. They didn't want me there. That's fine. That's fine. But they could have their opinions about me. That's whatever. Everyone's got them. Um, but they, in the course of me not filming, there was other people filming and I was like, all right, fine. You know, we'll walk, we'll walk this line. Um, and so we got to the point where the end of the night, you know, led up to, you know, the course of the night where everything <laughs> up to that point was just, you know, I, while I was walking with this group before I was recording, there was like plenty of people that come up, were coming up, shaking hands that were friendly, that were cool, that were like, hey, man, good to see you back here in the city, blah, 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 blah. But there's that small group, that small group of antagonized individuals that are like, no, 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 we don't want CJ because they got their own personal issues with me. Whatever. Have your issues. I really don't care. Um, Mike Taylor, hold up, man. But uh, so with that, um, that's that small enough group that said, no, we don't want you here. You need to go. And honestly, at that point in the night, it was time for everyone to go. Um uh, and so I cut out, you know, 
And as far as anyone not, you guys, I don't have any hard feelings about anybody not like jumping into my to my rescue. I, what could you do? You know what I mean? I would have. It would have been different. I think I would have done things different. That's me. But as far as like anyone from like from out of town streamers, they got a lot of flack and a lot of a lot of grief for for not stepping up. Uh, my feelings were hurt a little. Whatever. Um, I haven't said anything about it. I haven't put any like direct issues about that out there and said anything bad or derogatory about any one of them, just so you guys know. And I've talked to most of them uh, about it. It's whatever, you know. Um, I, <laughs> I'm going to keep being me, guys. I'm going to keep pushing, you know. So it's okay. Yeah, so, but it was, it was stupid. The whole thing was just ridiculous, you know. Anyway, because I've been there from the beginning. So what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? But, um, <laughs> people are going to act out of ignorance and that's what that was. I don't mind saying that, that was just straight up ignorant, you know, listening to the, listening to the sounding board of a couple people, uh, like two people out of Seattle that have some, some, <laughs> some bullshit to say really. And that's what it came down to was some people, you know, and we know who they are, you know what I mean? Which is ridiculous, but you know, from, from the keyboard, from the keyboard tower, you know, people got a lot of, uh, a lot of tight power, you know, good for them. You know, they build an empire of, of bullshit, and that's fine. They can have it. They can have their. <laughs> they can have, they can maintain their their need for control of the controllable. You know what I mean? I would hope that all of us are are at a place where we don't need somebody to to tell us what to think or how to act. You know, we can go ahead and act on our own. So, but if other people are in that place where they need someone to kind of guide them through the the steps of life, then well, more power to them. You know. This is a big ass shotgun mic. Sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to get this thing up. It's a furry beaver. But it's this counter this cancel culture that we're in, guys. And it's it's ridiculous. You know? It's just you know, it's <laughs> it blows my mind really that people could be so small minded. You know what I mean? So small minded. That they're in a place where they're like, you know, they want to spit lies as as gospel you know and they want to go ahead and turn people for any one reason because they feel validated in their views and and they, they sit on this like holier than thou aspect of knowledge and understanding whatever you know it's, it it frustrates me it doesn't it doesn't like it frustrates me because not so much because they do it because every a lot of people do that you know and uh but the ones that it, it frustrates me that people actually listen, you know, that there's anybody that would be like, oh, maybe CJ is a cop. Really? How obvious of an undercover cop could I possibly be if I was one? I have a microphone and a camera and I'm 260 pounds of big face. The f Really? Get out of here. It's just, that's just stupid as hell. You are just dumb if that's what you think. And if you think that everyone in the police force doesn't have direct access to everything that everybody else is viewing at the same time that anyone else is out there. Really? Come on, man. And that's where it's like, dude, I don't even, here's where it's at with all of that. And I'm going to say this right now. Anybody that's in that, in that belief system, anyone want to go pass it along to them. You don't need to be on my camera. I'm going to go ahead and bring my microphone. I don't care what you look like. Never have, never will. I don't need to see your face. Don't want to see your face. I want to hear your voice. That's why I carry a microphone. Because I'd rather hear what you have to say about shit than see what you're doing while you're there, okay? Because if you're going to do some vandalistic shit and you want to go ahead and cause issues, that's fine. Go ahead. That's cool. But right now, what I want to tell you is that I want to hear why you feel validated in doing that. And I'm not even saying that it's not my place to call it out, you know, what you're doing. We'll tell you when you're right and you're wrong. I just want to hear what you have to say. That's all. I want to talk to you. I want to have you let go of this belligerence that keeps you from being able to talk to people you know why can't you go ahead put down whatever <laughs> unsolicited feelings of animosity you have towards my fat face and have a conversation and realize that there's a lot of people watching there's a lot of people that want to know too a lot of people are curious about how you feel just saying you know i'm good with talking to you i don't know why you have an issue talking to me so and i'm not saying everybody does i'm just saying there are those that do have an issue with just talking and it can't be because you you hate me so much because you don't know me so you know it's silly it's silly man but uh that's how people operate you know they operate out of you know 
a firm belief that they have it figured out, you know? So, it's whatever. <laughs> Eventually, they will figure it out. They might realize that I'm not so wrong, you know what I mean? For just standing around asking questions. What would the world come to then? So, I got my bag packed. I got my little GoPro set up here. Uh, I'm going to take some wide angle shots. And um, anyway, so someone asked, uh, I'm in Minneapolis right now uh, at George Floyd Square. I've uh, been talking to folks, having a walk around, um, asking some questions, getting some interviews. It's been cool. been very chill. Everyone's been super cool. Um, and I think that's awesome that everyone has been so inviting and friendly, you know, everywhere else we go in the world, you know, it seems like there's issues there, but here and everywhere else, people seem to be pretty open to the fact that conversation is not dangerous. You know what I mean? That listening to someone isn't going to kill you. So anyway, um, yeah, a lot of issues. I'm in, I'm in car mode right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do have a fat face, guys. I can't help it. It's, a, it's attached to a fat neck. I'm a big bodied guy. I can't help that either, you know? It's just who I am. So, um, got my little GoPro set up here, guys. My little selfie stick for GoPro action. Uh, which is cool because a big shout out to Cindy Jean, the other CJH. Uh, well, one of two that I know, actually. Ah. You're not perfect. What did someone say? But have an ethical journalist card. Hey, Carly, thank you very much. I know I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. <laughs> you guys might kick yourself if you listen to me. Then you're like, well, that guy was really full of shit. Man, what was I doing listening to him? You know, I hope that's not the case, though. I hope that's not what it turns into because I feel genuinely like, uh, you know, I, f I feel genuine in what I'm saying. You know, I, I genuinely, truly do believe that what I'm saying isn't so far fetched. You know, um, I'm not a dum dum. Anyway, okay, we're gonna do this. Boom! Set you down right there. Uh, got my GoPro set up here. I need to do this here. And I'm going to go back out. Uh, the reception might be a little choppy on the phone. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Immediately. It's cold. I'm going to leave you guys in here. See you. I'm kidding, you crazy kids. You're coming with me. Um, I hope that the lights are all turned off. We're about to find out. Either that or I'm going to drain Andrew's battery and he's going to be furious. It's a good thing I got... Oh, no, that thing's dead too. So I was going to say, I've got my, my Halo, which... Turn off lights. Eesh. But my Halo can jumpstart a truck. It's pretty badass. I lost part of my Joby, y'all. Yeah, it's crazy cold. Um, so I'm going to do a little test here real quick. I'm going to plug this in. You guys tell me if you can hear it, okay? Boop. How's that? Sound okay up there? It's snapping. So, um, again, be very clear. Uh, everything out here has been super cool. You guys, there's no issues here with, uh, with anything. <laughs> Everyone here is actually just incredible. It's been, it's been a fun day, um, hanging out. Everyone's been really chill and, uh, yeah, we're going to grab some barbecue now. I just want to make sure the lights turned off in the truck. Yep. We're good. We're good. It's choppy. 
quiet. Oh, it's because the microphone's going the other way. So, um, check this out, though. This is the side of this church right here. I'm going to turn off that light. There we go. I don't know how well you guys can see this here. But this is George Floyd Square where we're at right now. I'm going to take this mic off the top, actually. There we go. But I wasn't ready to wrap yet. But I know that Rob had told me to come back and grab some barbecue. So I'm going to go back and get some chow on. Sit by the fire and kick it. Boy. My gosh, it's cold. No joke, guys. It's, <laughs> it's so breezy out here right now. Man. Sound is good? Yeah, I'm just doing it off the phone. I'm not running any of my... Uh, any mics so we're just gonna walk and talk for a minute here and then i'm gonna go give you guys uh give you guys a breather for the night probably because uh uh there's andrew right there look at this look at this look at this scary looking dude i know is there still barbecue getting served no, they're, they're it what yeah. i haven't gotten it yet I gotta go see if there's any left. Yeah, go see. There might be some left, but I know it's just music in there, dude. Loud, so be careful. Okay. They, they took my Instagram video down. Like, really? That's how it is now. But I mean, I can go live. I went live again. But Facebook. Let's is. walk down there real quick, and then we'll come back. Okay. Just real quick. Cause you know how it goes. If I end up eating barbecue and chilling out, then I'm gonna be down here all by myself. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, poor Ed, you're sitting in this truck. <laughs> no, actually, I'd be better. Oh, poor guy. I can't feel my <laughs> Andrew wants to go sit in the truck. I'm not going to let him. <laughs> We're going to keep him out here all night. No, I still see that. Oh, that's the fire going. Look at Andrew. Look at him walking. <laughs> he's, he's like, the hell, man. I wanted to go. What? You think I got you think I anything boxed up? Uh, yeah, you got stuck talking to your stream again, didn't you? I did. You did. But it was good. I think hey guys for real, I think we had a good chat. I got to cover some stuff that uh, I think needed to be covered, so that was good. So we're gonna go ahead and uh yeah, man, that's just dead. Uh, I'm just, I just want to walk it down and back, dude, because they died. My phone died in the middle of our feet up here. So. I'll wait for you to hear the middle. I can't feel my hand. <laughs> Sit by the fire, dude. No, I was surprised it was. I said goodbye to everyone. No, <laughs> it'd be awkward if you went yeah, back now. Back to, hey. All right. So, yeah, this is George Floyd Square, guys. This is Cup Foods right here. So, again, I don't have any guy. Uh, he doesn't look cold, but he, he feels cold. <laughs> So again, I don't have copyright clearance for any of the music you might be hearing right now. So I'm gonna try to talk over it real quick and uh, just let y'all know that uh, check Andrew's pockets. Yeah, I'm gonna check his pockets. This is Cup Foods right here, guys. This is the store that where apparently George Floyd passed that. Uh, they, they said he passed the counterfeit bill. Right here is the angel right here that uh, this painted where George Floyd had passed away. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we missed the barbecue, but it's for no good reasons. For good reasons, y'all. So I'm gonna keep cutting it down here. Uh, I gotta get away from the music because it is copyright situation, y'all. So these businesses, there's, uh, they're all operational down here. Just to be very clear, there's plenty of businesses that are still working. Uh, some just aren't open because COVID, I'm guessing. But as we're moving away from this music here, uh, get you guys a look at what's happening here. I know, no barbecue. But uh, I, I kind of, it cut off early while we were down here at the, uh, uh, at the, the grave, or the cemetery, the one up here. So we're gonna go back up there and take a look. Ah, man, I know everyone's just chilling out here. It's so cold. I'm not used to this cold though. That's me, you guys know that. <laughs>
But oh, so real, real fast. It was pretty wild. I don't know if I told you guys. Back at the Cup Foods over here, uh, they released the balloons, but they were mylar, and they went right into the power lines and uh, blew out the power for this entire block. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was laughing. I think I was mentioned before, but they were like, it was George Floyd's big final, like, F you to the, uh, to the cup foods that called the police on him. But <laughs> anyway, uh, dang, this thing is just one huge mural. I'm not, I'm not sure if any of this was, anyone in the comments, man, was all this stuff here before, like, all this mural here? I'm guessing not. Yeah, definitely not. Wow. Oh, Tents too. These are all made you know, on all the blocks. They're like Normandy style, like D-Day beach landing stuff. But they've been so they've been. This whole area has been for the from from the beginning. Uh, but they've kept it very peaceful, and they've they've maintained a lot of effort in keeping uh, the community here inside of that George Floyd Square area, like the whole kind of their occupied area. They've kept it very very peaceful um, from all the from everything I've heard. So. Um, That being said, uh, I think that's why they've been able to maintain it. But they, one of the things they say is uh, no justice, no streets. And when they say that, normally what you hear there is no justice, no peace. But when they say no streets, I mean they're not getting the streets back. You know? so. so uh, yeah, this is where the phone died. I didn't get a chance to really show you guys much of this, uh, these tombstones. Take a look at these real quick. And all those names that you saw me walking by, these are the tombstone represent, uh, representations of those names. Whew. Sorry, it's cold. I, just, I talked a lot in the truck. I'm not, I'm just cold right now, so I don't have a lot to, I'm not saying much. Oh my gosh. What's up, Dave? How you doing? Rochelle, how you been? Ooh. Yeah, it's been a police-free zone, they call it. Why have you only been able to watch a minute? Demetra, what's happening there? All right, Mike Holt's in the house. What is happening, Mike? Andy McDonald, did you say something about me walking on the graves? I'm walking in between the graves. Unless they buried everybody perpendicular to the tombstones. And again, there's no one actually buried here. To be very clear. Jeff, what's happening? Marker, Candy, I hope you're watching. Marker, grass, walk, we'll do this one too. And grass, marker, marker, walk. And Robin, I don't have my rock with me. Uh, pardon, I'm sorry I didn't have that. 
yeah, a, a heated glove, a heated jacket would be nice right now. I'll tell you guys what. So, I'm sorry, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Candy. Oh, the name's on the street, Candy? We're not supposed to walk down the street now? Well, apologies, Candy. Because uh, there's people that drive up and down that street all day, just so you know. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, well, Candy, that's a silly comparison. Anyway, um, their name's on the street. They're, they're not actual graves. Yeah, I know. I got to guess. Name of the street. <laughs> Good night, Jennifer. <laughs> hey, Steph, yeah. Throw that to the Amazon wish list. That'd be great because it is definitely getting cold out here right now. Uh, it's funny. My nose is either running from uh, from pepper, pepper spray, tear gas, or from uh, this Midwest. Uh, is this, this is Midwest or is it Mideast? Real question, because um, uh, either way, I was not going ready for the cold. You just anywhere? Oh, wait, hold on. Danger, thin ice. As in, this pond will be frozen, and it will be thin ice. Or maybe it's talking about the comments from earlier. People were skating on thin ice. I don't know. Hey, Salem, uh, Jeff, hit me up. I'm not even kidding. I have that written down on uh, my paper uh, for things that are coming. So is Salem still going to be cracking uh, with COVID and, you know, whatever else is going on in the world that is scary, which should make for even a better Halloween scary time, right? I don't know. But, uh. I am very curious. Uh, so Jeff, get back to me, DM me on, uh, on how that looks for Salem, for Halloween. Uh, it's Midwest, oh, really, Melanie? It's crazy. When does it turn into the Mideast? Curious. Uh, good old Minnesota, <laughs> Minnesota. Yeah, so everyone's pretty much cleared out, guys. Uh, I'm going I'm to take you with me back to the truck. Um, but um, anybody, hey, I know that I had a couple people that requested um, to come on. Uh, so I'm going to add somebody right quick. Don't do anything weird like, like flash your juju berries or anything. If you do come on, just saying. Um, yeah, I'm looking. I got a Green Bay jersey now. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to rock that, go to Lambeau Field. As long as they're not playing the Seahawks, we'll be okay. So, anybody got any questions? They want to hop on here with me for a second? Please. What size? Yeah, juju berries. Freeze your juju berries off. What size what? <laughs> that was not what I expected to hear.
All right, we're getting up to that point where it's going to be a, a music situation here. So. So, yeah, I'm going to have to uh, cut the feed here in a second because I think it's pretty much going to get to the point where, like, I don't know, maybe this is maybe it's that local jam. I don't know. But either way, uh, I'm going to get up here. And, uh, man, my hands are so cold they didn't even register on the screen. There we go. I think. Uh, just a he's, minute. He's looking for you, bro. I saw him. He passed me. He was like, I can't feel my hands. I got to go. Yeah, he's like, he told me he left, and then he came back. Oh, I guess he's still here. I, <laughs> I ran into him on the road coming back. He was like, you were talking to your stream in the truck. I'm like, yeah, I had to take a minute. Bad, bad, I had to take bad. a minute. Hi, yeah. Hey, I'm gonna, safe, right? I'm gonna, I'll be back. I'm going to come sit by the fire for a minute. I'm going to talk in a minute. I'm just going to wrap up. <laughs> Man. Crazy. <laughs> but, hey. For real, the love out here is great, guys. I mean, sitting right here in the center of like the Ep George Floyd Square, right? And we're chilling, and everyone's super chill. Everyone's hella cool. Everyone's like legit, just inviting and friendly. So it's uh, so this is the uh, one of the George Floyd memorials here, but um. What size sweatshirt or jacket? Uh, extra large on the sweater. I think it, I, I used to be 2XL, but things is changing because of all the, it's all of that, that COVID, or not COVID, but I mean that uh, that protest waiting on loss. So, um, hey, I just want to tell you guys, I appreciate you coming with me today, hanging out. Uh, and again, I hope that we've covered some ground, answered some questions, maybe, maybe, opened up a few more questions um but uh i'm gonna go i'm gonna do a real quick wrap <laughs> because it's um it's cold it's real cold and uh we're out here uh in the street so um i appreciate you guys being a part of this tonight and uh yeah i'll be back on tomorrow i'll be back in kenosha tomorrow night so uh a lot of love you guys and I uh, appreciate everyone that came out to say hi tonight. Uh, it was really good to see you um, and get a chance to meet some new folks. And uh, yeah, we got some stuff on the horizon that's coming up. So I'm gonna talk to y'all about that here uh, in the next day or two, okay? Um, but yeah, the art behind me. Incredible stuff. You would, I mean, there's some really incredible art back here. So uh, around the corner with the cup foods right there. Great stuff. Anyway, guys, uh, yeah, it's just I'm, I see comments. I want to I want to talk about them, but I'm gonna let them ride. Let you guys talk. Uh, hey, if you guys see some people in here that you have that had, like I said before, um, if there is somebody in here that said something that made you feel some sort of way, don't be afraid to reach out to them. And hey, if you said something pretty strong, don't be afraid to receive that question. Okay, let everyone talk. I hope you guys have a chance to communicate with each other on your own outside of the confines of this, you know, live stream. I mean, we're building a community here, guys. And I'm talking worldwide. There's people all over the planet that have, that have questions. And hopefully there's a few people out here that will have answers. So talk amongst yourselves, talk amongst yourselves, and uh, open yourselves up to different views and different walks of life, guys. That's the only way we're going to get changed. We're going to push for a better tomorrow for our kids to, yesterday that are behind us right now. So let's, let's, let's bust our ass to make the world better for them, all right? Put in the hard work today so that they can have world that we want to have so and that's what i'm going to tell you guys all right now i've been asked a lot like what do we think it's going to take to make this change happen really what it comes down to is we may never see it in our life guys and i've said this several times but we can plant the seeds for our children to go ahead and take the harvest so if we can help give them the tools they need to be safe enough and healthy enough to raise up and to keep moving in the direction of progress then you know that's an accomplishment and that's maybe all we can hope to do is pass on better better today for their tomorrows so uh, love you guys i appreciate you riding with me today it's been in a it's been a long day uh from kenosha to minneapolis uh, and tomorrow back to kenosha so uh i'll be talking to you guys soon all right stay safe love you